the first video that really hooked me, it spoke to me personally, both as a new father at the time and uh, perhaps also as a, as a son of a deceased father. Uh, it was where you're talking about the relationship one has with his father. Um, can you please elaborate a little bit on that? Well, the proper role of a father, and a mother as well, although the roles aren't identical, I would say the, the proper fundamental maternal role is one of protection. And the reason for that is quite obvious, is that newborn infants need above all to be protected. The proper response to an infant's distress is, you're right and I'll take care of you right now, especially for the first nine months of life. There's no disputing that. Whenever the infant is upset, he or she needs to be dealt with as if that upset is justified. Yeah. But then as the infant matures, and even by the age of nine months, I would say, then that that has to be, that 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 interaction has to be made more sophisticated because the child has to be encouraged to take his or her place in the world. And I would say that encouragement is more on the masculine side of the, of the, of the duty distribution. And the father's fundamental role is to produce a bounded environment in which exploration can take place with an eye towards the encouragement of the child to develop more and more competence to push that development because and it's true for mothers and fathers that the end goal is to produce a person who's capable of operating autonomously in the world the father's role is to foster that sense of confident autonomy by by encouraging the child to push his or her limits mm -hmm. and like that role can be played by mother or father if it's a masculine role it doesn't have to be played by a man but it's it still tilts in that direction and so for example fathers are much more likely to engage in rough and tumble play with their kids which is very very good for them by the way and absolutely necessary and something to be completely encouraged rough uh, and tumble play yes. that is just fooling wrestling, around wrestling, wrestling with yeah them. yeah wrestling physical play because the kids learn well they learn all sorts of things it's like they learn to dance that's yeah. the best way of thinking about it because a confident child understands the physics of play and you can see this e even in such simple things as going into a park where there's a lot of dogs and the dogs that are well socialized are very good at acting out playfulness and you can tell the difference between a growling dog and a mean dog and a, and a frightened dog and a playful dog people are very good at making that distinction mm. and a playful dog knows how to move in a playful manner and so does a playful child and that attentive readiness to play is something that's fostered by those play fight interactions with fathers for example and that makes the kid r ready in a deep sense to engage with other children and it also sets the stage for a for a confident physicality in ad in in adolescence and in sexual relationships i mean really? and and so yeah because a lot of our wisdom is embodied when you when you wrestle with kids then they learn what hurts them and what doesn't. They learn how far they can be extended and stretched. They test the they, limits. They test the limits. They learn to trust because you throw kids up in the air and you catch them and you push them to the point where they're really excited. So they're right on the edge of fear, actually. The excitement pushes right to the edge of fear. Mm -hmm. and But they learn. And then they also learn how they can interact with someone else physically and what's acceptable and where the limits of pain are and what's frightening and what can be sustained and how to take turns and all of that. And that's... It's not abstract, it's concrete, it's right in the body. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's part of the father's role. But the fundamental paternal role is that of encouragement. And the encouragement is, you can handle it, kid. Life is hard, it's going to come at you in all sorts of ways. You can accept that as a challenge. You can thrive, you can master it. And I'm behind you. Like, I'm behind the, the best in you manifesting itself in the world. And that gives a kid a spine, you know, mm -hmm. metaphysically and mm -hmm. physically. And so it's an unbelievably important thing to do. And fatherlessness is a catastrophe. Yeah. Like if you look at the epidemiological literature, the psychological literature, fatherlessness predicts all sorts of terrible outcomes. It's not good. And we've fallen into this idea in our society that fathers aren't necessary. It's like, and it's just a family that's run by single mother is just as good in, in the broad sense as a family with two parents. And it's simply not true. All the evidence suggests, now, that doesn't mean that there aren't single parents who are nobly raising their children, because there are. Mm. But in the aggregate, 
the two-parent family is a much better arrangement for children. So you said that uh, without the encouragement of the father, it's just as if uh, its spirit will be left outside the walls of civilization. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, that's, exa deep. that's exactly it, is that, you know, the father's role is to, to, to note that the individual is capable of thriving in a difficult world and to put that message forward and to, and to note that that's been the message of people who've been successful throughout history mm. and that each individual is capable of doing that at least to some degree and has no better bet. That's the has no better alternative. So You have been called YouTube's new father figure. Your, I mean, your advice is they, they are kind of fatherly. Is that something that comes with the territory of being a psychologist or is this your well, own I would personal say both. touch? Well, it's both, both being a professor, at least in principle, and being a psychologist, a clinical psychologist. So I'm a, a hybrid of those two things. Mm -hmm. And I've, I was also trained, like I've read um, deeply in the clinical literature, psychoanalytic, existential, humanist, there's all sorts of different streams of clinical thinking, all of which have something uh, very valuable to offer, I would say. But I was trained technically as a behavioral psychologist, and one of the things that a behavioral psychologist is trained to do is to take a large problem and to break it down into units that are small enough to actually manage practically. And so I've always considered my teaching in that light is my goal is to take high-level abstractions and to break them down until they're practically applicable mm -hmm. and so I suppose so that that's that's both educational so that's the professorial side and psychologically meaningful so that's the clinical psychology side because clinical psychologists fortify the individual that's really their role mm -hmm. and to the degree that that's a fatherly role, well, partly that's a consequence of the fact that I have been a father, I still am, and that um, I'm of the age where that's an appropriate way of interacting with people. But it's also mm. in the same category in some sense, as like because the purpose of a father psychologically is to fortify the courage of his children. And so that's appropriate for me given the stage of the development of my career, for example. 